idea for the Ballade arose because of a very good relationship I have with the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra, and in particular their principal cellist, the Norwegian-born Jonathan Osgaard. And Jonathan had played a lot of my silent film scores for me in Liverpool, in particular one called Flesh and the Devil, which was a really overheated romantic film starring Greta Garbo. And he liked that kind of very romantic feeling, Jonathan did, and, and asked me, he said, would you write something for me? And what happened, and has been happening over the last few years, is that the orchestra have been commissioning works for some of their principal players, and Jonathan was in line to have a piece written for him. Uh, so I, that came together very nicely, uh, that, uh, you know, we would do it, and of course being a, you know, composer, it, of this world, I needed a deadline because otherwise I can't write anything. Uh, <laughs> so we had the deadline, there was going to be a premiere, and um, I had about a, uh, almost a two-year run out. So, so it, it, it was time to write a rather substantial piece. Um, but I didn't want it, and indeed the instruction was don't write something we're going to call a concerto, you know, make it slightly less than a concerto. So um, I aimed for about 20 minutes or so, and it turned out to be 23 in the end. Well between friends. Um, and I thought about it and I thought, well, um, I, it just popped into my head that there was a piece that I loved very much by Foray. It was a, a early Foray, which is very, very accessible. Um, and it was a, a group of three songs called Poème d'un jour, Poem of a Day, the story of a day. And it was a boy meets girl, you know, boy gets girl, boy loses girl you know it was, a, it was a, the kind of almost a Hollywood formula and this was in these three very concise poems and I used to love them when I when I was a teenager I used to thought this was oh this is so cool you know Paris and uh, you know <laughs> and um, but I thought well you, you know there was something about Jonathan and the cello and and so on I thought it would make an interesting three movement suite in a way of, uh, you know, a portrait of this guy, you know, this uh, lad, um, and uh, working on that basis. In fact, it turned out to be five movements be because uh, um, they uh, had an, an element of disappointment. Uh, it was, it was, you know, the boy sees girl, that was, e that was easy, and then they swear eternal love, but in fact I had that as swearing and also a slow movement as I couldn't couldn't really leave it as uh, so throw away um, and then and then there was this element of disappointment uh, and you know oh well just one of those things and so on but then I added a fifth idea which is that he strides off with his opening guy on guy on the make <laughs> uh, attitude and uh, so we, we, we had a little reprise of the opening so there was it's in five sections. And we we did it. Uh, it was really very thrilling to do it because he, he's a fabulous player. Donald was a fabulous player, and uh, we had the performance, and then immediately went into studio and and uh, did a recording, sort of about a month later. So we had also had time. We had time to listen to it again and make make any adjustments. And I think he did he did did a great performance of uh, of this work. And I chose Bellard as a title because a I didn't know of a cello piece called Ballard. Um, I, I'm very familiar with uh, um, Chopin ballads. And the thing about a ballad is that it's a story, a ballad, a ballad in the traditional medieval sense in which, in which uh, you, you tell a long romantic story and it can be very dramatic, it could be all sorts of things, but there, there is a kind of backlog to this title, there's a background to the title. Um, uh, and so I thought, well, I'm telling a story, and it's, it's a kind of romantic story, but uh, the main thing was to get Jonathan singing out on the cello, you know, it, that was a, a, an incredible gift he has, of, you know, really playing so soulfully. I have 
have written for solo cello in, in the context of theater music or television film music. I find it a very eloquent instrument to, to use in a dramatic context. It can do so very, but mainly that it's, it's, a, it's an instrument that moves you. And uh, so in a way, uh, I like writing for cello. Uh, and um, I immediately thought, well, we've got to do something else, either a bigger piece, a concerto, or maybe some chamber music might be fun, a, 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 a sonata, or something he could use with a piano. So, in, in fact, I've almost immediately then made a... I had a rehearsal score, but, the, but uh, hard to play, except for me, who <laughs> knew what it was. So I actually rationalized it, uh, so that, in fact, it would work as a concert piece for cello and piano. Um, and it's quite fun. We, 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 we know, we used to rehearse it uh, with me playing the piano for him. So, um, you know, that's going to be available as soon as the record is available. And uh, so I'm looking forward to performing it or hear it performed for cello and piano. Strongest in my mind were the, the sort of writing I was doing when I used the cello in, in, in a dramatic context. But over the years, and from childhood on, I was obsessed with playing chamber music. So more than the concertos, which I have conducted, the, the Dvorak and the Elgar a few times, um, uh, and things like the Brook Kol Nidre a few times. Uh, so I, I kind of had the cello in my ear. You know, there were certain sounds, like the opening of the Brahms E minor, piano sonata, you know, with the, that low E that starts it all. That's always in my ear, uh, the opening of the Elgar concerto, you know, it's sort of the, the final movement of the Dvorak, where it suddenly it leaves the excited finale feeling and goes into just a lyrical outpouring. Um, I, I always find that t terribly affecting. Um, and uh, so, in a way, it just seemed very natural to me. 